Salute is a program for and about men and women who have served our country. Our program includes news about the laws that affect veterans, information on benefits and services, and news from veterans organizations. And now, our host, Bob Peters. Hello, welcome to Salute. I'm your host, Bob Peters, and with me today is Mr. Charles Murakami. Did I say that correct? Correct. First time, too. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to the show, sir. Um, we're glad to have you here. I saw in the newspaper that uh, you were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, and uh, I think it's very important important story that you have about you being an American of Japanese descent and what went on during World War II and what you guys did for this great country that we call our country. So could you tell me where you were born and uh, let's, let's hear your story. Well, I was born in Portland, Oregon uh, in uh, March 4th, 1922. And uh, at the time of I was born, my father, mother and father uh, were farmers and uh, they were farming until I was, I, was, I can't remember <laughs> really that well, but I think I was about four years old when they decided to give up farming and start a grocery store in Portland, Oregon. Mm. And uh, uh, I have uh, four sisters and two brothers. and. I'm one of the only three survivors of the family. I have a sister older than me and a sister younger than me. And uh, we all went to school in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, after I finished high school, I, uh, my, being that my family was too poor, I, I couldn't go on to college because I had to go out and work and uh, you help support the family. And uh, from there, uh, I was, uh, let's see, I guess I was about 17 when the war started in 1941. Yeah. And uh, uh, that, that was in December. And we, we got notice that we had to get ready and uh, be ready to be evacuated to a camp. And so my, my mother and father had a grocery store, and, and uh, the unfortunate part was that they were trying to sell all their, all their equipment and, and the, you know, the So they the had products. a period of time that they were told they had to report it? Or? Yeah, well, they didn't tell his exact date until later. So uh, no one would come and buy any of the, of the you know, the stuff that we had in the store until the last week. Uh, and then uh, we got absolutely nothing for it. And that was how it was. And they, uh, they, told, they told us that we could only bring one suitcase per person, you know? And then uh, you had to report to this uh, relocation assembly center. So I, I understand that uh, the people that didn't have friends that would bring them there, uh, an army truck would come and pick them up, you know, and bring them to the uh, assembly camp. And from from assembly camp, uh, we were there, oh, I guess from May to about, about September, October, I can't remember the exact time. But then from there, we, we, we were put on a, a train uh, and uh, shipped to Hunt, Idaho. And these, this was a permanent camp. And uh, we, it ended up that the people that in, in uh, the Portland camp, they went to Idaho and then you know, California went to, to different camps. In Washington, uh, the people in Seattle, Washington came to the same camp we were in. And uh, during that time was there, we, uh, uh, did everything ourselves, and they they established uh, uh, you know blocks that you lived in the the houses in a barrack, and there was let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six six apartments in in each barrack, 
and uh, the way every every so-called apartment had just one room and a pot-bellied coal stove, and uh, that's how we lived in 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 these camps. And they, it was just like the service because uh, we had a mess hall, and then uh, it, you had, when you 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 showered or had had to do laundry, then there was one of those uh, little barracks that that housed these kind of facilities. And so it was not that great, you know, everything was, there was no pave, pavement around and it was very dusty. Yeah. And then when the rains came, my God, we just sloshed around in that deep mud, you know, you'd have to take off your shoes at your door and, and uh, you know, go, go in with stocking feet because your shoes were just muddy. And that lasted, I don't know how long, but anyway, uh, that's how it was. And then each block, they had to uh, set up their own mess hall and, you know, things of that nature. So they, f they found uh, volunteers to do the cooking and the waitresses and the bus boys and so forth. But then um, they were paid, uh, you know, to do this. And, and uh, the skilled workers are getting $16 a month and uh, the unskilled, I guess they were getting eight dollars, and that's that's what they gave us. And <clears throat> I was all there only about um, ten months or so, I guess. And and then I, you know uh, when uh, the uh, came, the army came in and recruited us. Uh, well, my older my older sister's husband was taken when, when Pearl Harbor happened, and we were you know, still living in Portland. They had, this, uh, well, you know, I, I guess they call it a live show. The people from Seattle came, the actors, and they, they put on the show, and most of the people were there. You know, there were about 3,000 people all, all together in Portland. And well, not all of those people were there, but then the FBI came in and rounded up all these so-called, you know, leaders of the group. Well, my brother was no leader. My brother-in-law was no leader. He just they they, they come around and you know, being being he was in the grocery business. They come for donations. See, and I don't know. I don't think it went to Japan or anything. You know, it's just for the community. And so those. Those people that gave the most, well, they were the leaders, so you know, uh, they grounded up those people first. Hmm. And so when they came in the camp to recruit, I asked the guy, well, listen, you know, I got a brother-in-law that was taken, and uh, if I volunteer, would that help him get released, you know? Well, you know, I was very naive. <laughs> I, I believe like, what, believed what they right? said, you know. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll volunteer, you know. So that's what I did. Mm. And so I guess that was in the winter. And uh, they said, well, you know, uh, they'll, they'll let us know when uh, they, they want us to go to uh, Fort. God, I can't even think of the name of the fort now. It was in in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. That was the closest uh, induction camp, I guess. And so they came and got all the volunteers that, I think it was in March. We went there and got in, inducted, but then we got, to, they, they sent us back home again. And we were, I guess we were there until, I don't know, it must have been about May, I guess. And then they round us all up and shipped us to uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and uh, we took our army test down there, and th then they sent you to wh whatever uh, company that you were assigned. Yeah, that would, uh, I may be wrong, but uh, you were all uh, Americans of Japanese descent. You were all oh, your yeah. own unit, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened was that, see, when the war broke out. The the one one battalion of Japanese uh, in Hawaii, you know, they they were already drafted in, in this 
uh, army already. And uh, from what I understand, I don't, I don't really know, know that much about the, the Hawaiians, but anyway, they shipped them to the United States to take basic training, and they did so well that they thought, well, gee, they ought to, you know, uh, make, make some, some use of us people, you know, in camp. And so that's why they came and, vol and you know, asked us to volunteer. And so uh, we all went to camp, you know, uh, I mean, uh, after we were inducted, we went to uh, Shelby, Mississippi, and uh, we took a training there. We had one uh, one battalion, and mm -hmm. uh, so the the uh, Hawaiians, the, the one that was in the service already, they they formed one company, and they were here in the United States taking training, and they didn't know what to do with them. I guess I don't know. But uh, during the time we were training, uh, we we heard that the Hawaiian uh, battalion. No, yeah, battalion. There would be our first battalion. We we had a regiment of that three battalions when we trained, and so uh, when we were going to ship overseas, they broke our unit up into two battalions and left one battalion here in the Mississippi trained recruits, and so we went over and uh, and landed in Naples, Italy. I mean, after we left uh, North Africa. And yeah, you went to North Africa first. First, yeah, we went to North Africa first, and we were there about a month or two, something like that. Um, but they used us to patrol the docks, you know, after the, you know, all the, the war in North Africa had ended. And so from there, they uh, sent us to uh, Naples, Italy, in, there we joined the Fifth Army, and and then uh, uh, the hundredth, that was the, the Hawaiian First Battalion. Uh, they joined us too, and then uh, and then we started pushing up north, and uh, well, we had a lot of battles. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Close from, calls. <laughs> from what I understand, uh, the four four two which you were in was one of the most decorated. Uh, Battalion. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know hardly anybody that didn't get wounded in our office. You know, some guys who got wounded three times. I was lucky. I only got wounded once, and then that that time I got wounded. Well, I was very fortunate because this was now. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, we we fought in Italy for I don't know how long it was, but it must have been about nine months or so. And uh, we pushed up past uh, Rome, you know. And we were we were sitting in the, in the back of the leading pizza, a leading tower of pizza, and they couldn't they couldn't bomb that thing. See, they didn't, you know, the United States didn't want to bomb that place because it's a famous place. Yeah. Well, but then the Germans were up there using that as a you know headquarters and spying down on us. See. And so we sat there, I don't know, about three days. And I don't know, and then, then they uh, decided to pull us back, and then uh, we went back on the front again, and then, uh, and for some reason, they pulled us back. And then we went to back to Naples, and then uh, the, uh, all the recruits that came, you know, we were, you know, we didn't know, we were different than the average uh, American you know, uh, infantry outfits because they they could only make replacements with Japanese people. You know, they they didn't allow the white people to join us. So anyway, we went back there and we and um, they filled up to all the companies you know that that needed uh, replacements. And uh, at, after that, uh, the the uh, invasion of France started the in our our, our uh, cannon company, uh, they, they flew in on gliders and on the su southern France where they invaded too. But you don't hear much of southern France because you know it was was small compared to the uh, you know the. Uh, I, I had an uncle who was in on D-Day. Oh, and he got off the ship and he, he I asked him about it and he says, 
I was I was so glad to get off that ship because you know it was just bouncing around. Everybody was getting <laughs> yeah. sick on the ship. Oh you know? yeah. And, and he says and uh, hitting that beach. And he says, but he says, but I was glad I was on the ship. He says the last thing I wanted to be is one of those gliders. Oh yeah. Well, that's what these guys went on. And I said, my God, you know, how did you survive those things? Yeah. You, I heard so many bad tales about those gliders. You know, there's a they they just had to land, and once you start down, that you had to land. You can't pull up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, they were the, they were the, the first of our outfit that went over there, I and mean, then uh, they brought us in there, and then they started to push up from the you know the uh, Mediterranean side towards uh, Germany. You know, and we got we got uh, well, I guess it must have been about. 75 miles up into, into France, and uh, we had some terrific battles, you know, with the Germans going up there. And uh, where I got wounded, uh, we, were, we were outside of this uh, city called Bruyères, and we were up in the, in, the, in the forest. And what the Germans would do, they would shoot artillery into the treetops and it would, you know, the burst would come down. Oh my God, so many of our troops got hurt there, you know. That's where I got wounded. But I was lucky, my, you know, those tree bursts, there's a lot, these are big trees. And mm. They had lots of big limbs, so they must have hit a couple of big limbs where it, before it hit me. So, oh, that, it hit me with a shrapnel was about this big, about six inches, and about that wide, and kind of tapered sharp, you know. Boy, I was really lucky. And, uh, you know, if, if I, that thing came full forward, they would have cut my neck off. Did you get hit on the shoulder with it, or? No, I got a back in here. In the back of the It'd neck? It'd knock you down, and oh, wow. First thing you do, you feel around, you know? I don't know why, it's just second nature, I guess. And yeah. oh my God, blood, you know? <laughs> and it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, it's, uh, you know, terrible, you know? But, oh, wow, a lot of the, our troops got hit there. And then um, they finally, you know, they finally, well, I had to go uh, back to the um, medical place and they sent me to the hospital and they stitched me up and uh, I was there only about two weeks, you know, and then, like our office, they didn't have any replacement, so if you were able to walk, you went back, you know. So, oh, that first first night back was terrible. You're scared, you know. So, oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, but, but you get used to it. I don't but think then, so. <laughs> uh, well, uh, right, right after that, we took that Bruyere's, uh, there was uh, this thir uh, 36 Division Texans that were trapped on this one hill, and they, I guess they tried to rescue them about, I don't know, 10, 15 times, and then finally uh, our 3rd third, third Battalion and I Company went up there, and uh, they, they rescued them. But they lost almost all their well, their company. You know, they were down to about twenty guys. Wow. You know, the riflemen and those guys. Jeez, they they, they took a beating up there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I don't know. We did a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And um, well, I I remember this one part in Italy where we were supposed to go forward about four or five miles and uh, take this. The junction in the road. So well, we pushed forward and drove the Germans back and then took the positions up. And the, unfortunately for us, the flanks didn't move up and we were out there all by ourselves. Oh, you know? wow. And oh, that was horrible. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how we got back. They told us to pull back because the, the flanks weren't moving up. So. Uh, you know, we were getting artillery from the sides and the front and stuff. You know, it was pretty bad. You know, a lot of guys got wounded up there. And we had to, when we moved back, we had to, you know, uh, help those wounded guys back too, you know. Yeah. So it was uh, quite scary, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but but uh, anyway, after France, uh, they sent us back to Italy again. Because you know, in the spring they were going to push up Italy, and we got there. And we were, uh, I guess, in about the central part of 
Italy, and there there were these big mountains in front, and you we had to climb that thing nine thousand feet. It was pretty steep, Boy. and the Germans up there shooting down at us. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I don't know how people like us how we live through all this stuff. You know, well. you, your buddy here would get shot, and this guy would get shot, and oh, you, you lucked out. You didn't yeah, get shot. Yeah, I talked to an, a friend of mine who was a paratrooper during oh, the day. He, he said basically he said the same thing like you said. Yeah. All I can say is you had a guardian angel looking over yeah, you because right. they had other plans for you, and, and you're oh, here. Oh boy, I'm telling you. Gee, well, war is terrible, and, you know, and uh, I don't know how we lucked out. But in France, my older brother was the, in the first replacement because he got uh, drafted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know, uh, the Japanese that were in the service during that time, they they give them really lousy jobs, you know. They'd, yeah, yeah, they weren't popular. No, no, I tell you, it was bad news. That's that's what they were drafting you, but they they, were, they wouldn't give you any you know, good assignments, you know. So anyway, he was uh, in. Uh, let's see, um, Wyoming. Oh, what's, what's that big town of Wyoming? I can't even think of that. Yeah, me. Yeah. Well, anyway, I can't he was in a fort. Caught fort. Me. Yeah. Fort there, and that's where he was. And then uh, they, they rounded up all these guys for recruits, and they sent them down to Mississippi. So he trained down there, and then he was, you know, those people were already in the service, so they already they were ahead of the ones that got drafted later. So they were the first replacements. And uh, I didn't know my brother was was uh, where I was at when I got wounded. See, I was a heavy weapon, so the weapons, the machine gun, uh, the, the attacking company, we, we get attached to them. And then you go, you go into battle with those guys. And we were all, we were all on this uh, hill in the, in the forest, and my brother was in F company, and that's who we were attached to. I was in H. and. Uh, from what, from what I understood, uh, my sister wrote me, you know, uh, later, and said, you know, Mom got two letters. <laughs>